In this episode, we're finally doing the Natchez Trace Parkway, all the way from Natchez, Mississippi to Nashville, Tennessee, stopping at most points of interest, except for a section that is closed. Then Chattanooga. Choo choo! I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. Well, on the road again, and today we're gonna add uh, two more states to our Mini Tini 3 map. We're gonna add Mississippi and Louisiana. Yes, because we're camping on the west bank of the Mississippi, so that will be Louisiana. And, uh, and then we're going northeast. <laughs> Well, what do you know? We are driving once again across Mobile Bay, the very northern end, by the mouth of the Mobile River. It is called the Braided River because so many streams are intertwined in this area. We're also going to drive through Mobile once again. And here's the plan. Today we're going to drive to Vidalia, Louisiana, which is across the river from Natchez, Mississippi. And then tomorrow we'll begin doing the trace. And we're about to cross into Mississippi. Welcome to Mississippi. Oh, thank you. I guess they forgot to put the sign. Yep, there's no Mississippi sign. What can you do? Oh, but there is. And I think it is fairly safe to stop for a minute and update the picture for my intro. The old one wasn't very good and let's face it, I have aged. I must confess, we haven't really done anything significant in Mississippi. Except for that one time we stopped by Elvis Presley's birthplace back in 2016, so this time we're gonna change that. Once again, about to cross the great river that separates the east from the west, the mighty Mississippi. And as I mentioned, we're going to spend the night in Louisiana. Here we are, Vidalia, Louisiana. I wonder if this is where the onions come from. Hmm, never mind. <laughs> there is another Vidalia in Georgia, and that's the one with the onions. We're staying here at Riverview RV Park and Resort, and I'm sure it's going to be right on the other side of the levee. Hmm, this is pretty nice. It would be nice to stay in one of these sites with a view of the river. And yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a river view, but from pretty far. Let's see all this from a higher perspective. Love flying over the mighty Mississippi. And there it is, on the other side, Natchez. We'll be going there right after I land. It is such a beautiful afternoon. Here's our RV park and the town of Vidalia. Let me tell you about our sponsor for this episode, Surfshark VPN. And we're here at a very nice campground, actually, with pretty decent Wi-Fi. I mean, the antenna is right there, literally. But what happens to that Wi-Fi? Well, it could be insecure. Someone could be eavesdropping on that connection, even if you have a password. So that's where a VPN is essential. VPN, is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. And that's ba basically what it does. You know, it creates a secure, private connection between your devices and the internet. But it does other things, it has other features, and my favorite is actually the ability to change your location virtually. And I'm old enough to remember that WWW stands for World Wide Web, and in the beginning, the World Wide Web was like that, worldwide. And if you access a website from a different country, you will get exactly the same website as a person from that country. That is no longer the case. For example, if you're used to watching Star Trek in the UK, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. In the United States, you need the Paramount Network, and many things 
things are like that. So if you travel internationally, you know, this is another essential. You can change your location virtually and watch whatever you want. And it has other features like clean web that gets rid of unwanted ads and a real incognito search. So I think it is one of those things that is essential when you're surfing the interwebs. In any case, if you go to surfshark.deal slash myrv, I'll put a link in the description and you put promo code myrv at checkout, you'll get 83% off and three months for free. Let's go into town. Let's go to Natchez, since it is Sunday and tomorrow, Monday, we're getting on the road early. Let's get lost on the narrow back streets so that we can admire the town's architecture. Beautiful houses here on Commerce Street, although all this was built after the Civil War. Actually, we're gonna miss a very important house, the 1958 Magnolia Hall, here on the right. An actual antebellum mansion, and they even offer tours, but... Another time, perhaps. The timing is just not gonna work out. Let's get something to eat, so tomorrow we can hit the trace early. Actually, there's a Natchez Brewing Company, so let's check that out first. I forgot the name, but it's a double IPA. The folks at the brewery recommended this restaurant by the river called The Camp. So that's where we're going. And here we are. And we even got a table with a view. And poutine. And the southern melt and the burger. And as we finish our meal, the most beautiful sunset is happening outside, over the mighty Mississippi. This is it. Tomorrow, the great adventure begins. Well, good morning. It is frigid. And that's where we ate last night. On that street by the river. I was hoping to catch the sunrise, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. But hey, we've got a barge coming up. The Mississippi River captures our imagination with images of paddle steamboats going up and downstream, like in a Mark Twain book. But in reality, in our time, they have been replaced by barges transporting cargo. It is time to hit the road, and we're going to be a total of four days on the trace. Not consecutive, though. We're going to get off the trace by the section that cuts through northwest Alabama that happens to be closed at the time we're here in early February. And we're going to visit our friends Mike and Jennifer in Linden, Tennessee, and then we'll retake the trace for the final stretch to Nashville. Our first point of interest today is actually not on the trace itself, it is right here in town the Natchez Indian Mounds.
Well, let's see what this is. Oh yeah, this is the grand village of Natchez Indians, uh, according to the name. And uh, basically, what it's all that is left are these mounds here. And we're just gonna walk around a little bit, and then we're gonna take uh, the Natchez Trace. As you can see, there's several mounds that remained of that remain of the village. Um, welcome to the original Natchez. According to the sign, the name was pronounced Nachi, I think. And by the way, I know it is, uh, it is Monday, but there's no one else here. It's just us. So I'm just gonna walk around all this, those exhibits. The Natchez Indians and their ancestors apparently inhabited this area between around the year 700 to 1730 AD. And the grand village here was their main ceremonial center between 1682 and 1730. Yeah, there's not a whole lot left of the original village except for what the archaeologists have found. So we kind of have to use our imagination and, and imagine what, you know, what was beneath, you know, below that mound or the temple mound over there. Very, very interesting, but we have a lot more points of interest today, so let's continue. All right, let's take the requisite picture, shall we? The Natchez Trace Parkway is 444 miles long and it roughly follows the old Natchez Trace, which for the most part also follows a geologic ridge line that provides a path of dry ground, which was originally used by prehistoric animals, then the cane tucks, and eventually European settlers, slave traders, soldiers, and even future presidents. The road is part of the National Park Service, so no commercial vehicles are allowed and I won't be able to fly the drone. This is one of many spots where you can stop and see the old trace, as it used to be before the parkway was built. And it looks like our neighbors in the Class A have decided to go for a stroll on it. Alright, let's continue. Our next point of interest is the Emerald Mound. It is through this not very well maintained road. Even though the parkway is very RV friendly, a lot of the parking areas don't have specific oversized vehicle parking, at least not explicitly, so sometimes it is kind of hard to know where to park. Here we are. This is actually one of the largest mounds in North America, covering 8 acres and 35 feet high. Alright, let's take this uh, short path here to the top of the mound. National Historic Landmark. So this would have been the temple that once stood at the top of the mound. I guess not everybody follows the instructions and uh, you can kind of tell that someone may have gone up to the top of the mound. It's gonna walk all the way around it and then we'll continue. But yeah, very impressive. That's a pretty big drop. That's a lot of dirt. They have to move around and with, you know, primitive tools, you know. All right, there's Minutini. There's the Class A. Let's continue.
Our next stop is Lois Bluff. Yes. According to the sign, the bluff shows a deep deposit of windblown topsoil known as Lois, and it was formed during the last ice age, where glaciers covered the northern half of the United States. Mount Locust here on the left is a historic site and one of the oldest structures in Mississippi dating back to around 1780. But the visitor center seems to be closed and there's a sign that says no RVs, so we're gonna continue. There are so many picnic areas like this one and here we're going to take a break. It is called North Fork Coles Creek. Cold Creek down there. Seems almost dry. There it is. Well, now we're gonna take a quick detour from the from the trace. How about we go see uh, the ruins of a plantation that that burned down in, in 1890, I believe. So. Let's check that out. I think all that remains is the columns. It is called Windsor Ruins, and this is our exit. At this exit, there's also a very famous restaurant called The Country Store, but I'm not sure about parking with the trailer in tow. Besides, we're not hungry yet, so we might skip that one. Well, here we are. These are the Windsor Plantation ruins, and uh, let me tell you, it must have been a sight to behold when it was, you know, not ruined, you know, <laughs> before the fire, uh, with all these you know, these tall cor Corinthian columns. I mean, that's, that that must have been something to see. Very interesting history, Daniel, the guy who constructed it, died a couple of weeks after the construction was finished, so he, was, he wasn't even able to, to enjoy it all that much. And ironically, it survived uh, the Civil War, only to be burned to the ground in, the, in 1890. So, um, can you imagine? Must have been like a, like a small palace. All right, let's continue. Uh, I mean, we took a detour from the Natchez Trace, but now we're, we're going back. We're going back to the Natchez Trace. But this was one of those things that, that was on the list. We're back on the trace. I wanted to go to this other place. It's called the AK Schaefer House. But I was looking on Google and everybody says that the road is really bad. Four by four uh, recommended, definitely no, no campers. So um, we might skip that one. Let's stop by the sunken trace eroded by centuries of traffic. And it is another one of those places where you can experience the old Natchez Trace. 
the way it used to be. Well, it says there is a five minute trail that will take us back in time into the early 1800s. Um, so let's do it. I mean, I could have brought my hiking shoes, but I didn't. Because I mean, how bad could it possibly be, right? Is this uh, a part of the trail that it, you know used to be eroded and it sunk? It's like a canyon almost. Look at that. That's the the original trace. In summer, especially, the humidity, the mosquitoes, you know, there, were, there was this disease back in the day, and uh, all of a sudden, here we are, modern, modernity again, the new Natchez Trace, and check it out right there, Minitini the trailer, Minitini 3, that is. We've got one more point of interest today before going to our campground. And by the way, February is probably the worst time of the year to do the Natchez Trace. By the time you watch this in spring, it's probably going to be much more beautiful with all the lush vegetation and the flowers in bloom. Right now we've got mostly sticks. Apparently the waterfall is a far cry from what it used to be. You know, there's less water and, uh, and, and it only really, you know, roars uh, after heavy rainfall. And uh, we've had a couple of dry days, but I hear water. So let's go down there, see what it is like. Well, that's not bad. I've definitely seen far worse. Oh yeah, Owens Creek waterfall here, very picturesque, very beautiful. I mean, look at the creek that way, going that way, it's like, it's great. It's a very easy hike, just, I mean, it's not a hike. You just have to come down here. I mean, the trailer is literally right up there. And this is gonna be our, one of our last stops today here on the on the Natchez Trace. We're taking it slow. I mean, look at that, look at that, look at that water. If it wasn't so cold, man, <laughs> uh, I forgot to bring my bathing suit anyway. But um, let me let me walk with me here as we uh, make our way back towards Minitini 3. But um, taking it slow, I think we got about 15 more minutes to go and then we're gonna call it a day, get some work done. Hopefully there'll be internet. Right here at this point, there's nothing. So, and Ili and I, we both need to work, so. If there's no internet at the place where we have uh, intended to stop, we might have to move and make a plan B, go towards uh, Jackson or a larger town, you know? Any, in any case, whoo, took my breath away. <laughs> Let's see what the view is from here. Yeah, this is just the back of the waterfall, the rear, and the Owens Creek there. Beautiful, beautiful day too. I mean, look at this weather. I cannot make this up. This is like perfect weather we've been uh, graced with today. Let's continue. We have a little more to go. 
We're gonna spend the night at Rocky Spring Campground, which is dry camping, but it is also completely free. First come, first serve, so we can't argue with that. It is almost empty, so let's go around the whole loop, maybe find higher ground where we might have a better chance at getting cellular data. Yep, this is it. Well, here we are, we made it to Rocky Spring. I mean, look at the size of this campsite. This is uh, very large. Of course, we are completely dry camping here, no hookups of any kind, and a very little cell phone signal. M miraculous, miraculously, our ISP Mint, who go, which goes through T-Mobile, is working well. Uh, but I decided, you know, to, to whip out the cell phone booster too. And with this one, we're getting decent AT&T and a tiny little bit of Visible, which goes through Verizon. So basically, we have the three networks here. So we're going to be able to work tonight, maybe even watch some, some TV. Okay, the plan now, I'm going to go to this ghost town that is one mile away. It's a two mile round trip hike. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit cold, but not bad. Just in case, I brought my bear spray because I see that the trash cans, you know, the trash cans are the bear country style. So just in case, you know, and I hear it works against humans too, if anybody wants to mess with me. By the time I figure out how the bear spray works, I'm probably gonna be a bear dinner, but hopefully not. So let's go on that hike. And I guess it's not a trail trail since you're basically walking along this road. In fact, we probably could have driven uh, to the ghost town. In fact, if I see a turnaround, I might do that tomorrow. Well, what do you know? After further research, there was indeed an actual trail to the Rocky Springs ghost town. But I couldn't find it, and all trails didn't know about it, so this is the route. This is the way. Well, here we have it, the official market, Rocky Springs, the once active spring provided a national stopping place for travelers on the Natchez Trace. And uh, well, nowadays it's kind of like a ghost town. And I guess that's the official trail that goes back to the campground. I just came up the road. I mean, I, the, the trail didn't show up on my old trails app, so I don't know what's going on. I'm probably just gonna go back through the road just, uh, just because since I saw it was a road, I didn't bring my hiking shoes, don't tell anybody. But my regular shoes are more comfortable for walking on the road, you know? <laughs> We're almost there. It's been, you know, a gentle uphill all this way. Don't be fooled by the apparent remoteness of this place. I can hear vehicles on the Natchez Trace, which is probably what, a quarter mile that way. We have some information about the town of Rocky Springs. Oh, we are actually on the old Natchez Trace. So this road or trail we're walking on right now would have been the original Natchez Trace. I guess that down there was a rocky spring. The nearby spring no longer flows. Today it's only the church and cemetery Two rusting safes and several abandoned cisterns mark the area. The Civil War, yellow fever, destructive crop insects and poor land management brought an end to this once prosperous rural community. Oh, well, you know, oh, look at that, that's a church up there. Built in 1835. This church is pretty much the only building that remains of what back in 1960 used to be a pretty prosperous town. By the way, fun fact, at the time churches would have two doors, one for men, one for women. This happens to be one of the most intact antebellum churches in Mississippi. 
It is very similar to the austere, simple design we saw at the Cades Cove Methodist Church a couple of years ago. I would definitely not call it ornate. Oh, there's a piano, and it is open. Great acoustics in here. And there's the cemetery right there. Fascinating to see the old cemetery. The church remained in service until 2010, at which point the congregation became too small to justify its continued use. The town, however, died much earlier. It began to decline after the Civil War, then there was yellow fever in 1878, and later the cotton crops were destroyed by an infestation, and the final nail in the coffin, the natural spring dried up. The last door closed in 1930. Another safe. And this is apparently another cistern. Let me tell you something. It is kind of hard to imagine that once, not so long ago, a town existed right here. I mean, a town like the one depicted in that picture by the entrance. And with the, you know, with the exception of some of those artifacts like, like the safe, it's all gone. You know, nature took it back. Like I say, in the end, the forest, the forest wants to go back to being a forest again. Let's get back. I'm thinking that bear spray might have been a little bit of an overkill, but it's better to have it and not need it. Oh, I've seen squirrels. Better to have it and not need it than not having it and, and encountering a bear or, or, you know, something else. Yes, we've made it back. I think I'm gonna cook some dinner now and, uh, and tomorrow we'll resume. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Good night, everybody. Well, good morning. It certainly froze last night. So peaceful, so nice to wake up to this. This campground was definitely a pleasant surprise, and there are two other national park campgrounds like this one along the trace, so we might stay at another one of this tonight as well. Did I mention how peaceful it is out here? Oh, never mind. Well, we've been power hogs, so as of 9 a.m. this morning, we were down to 25% battery. I mean, with both computers, I mean, we did use the microwave a little bit, 
And this is the thing many people have recommended we get a, a DC to DC converter so we can charge while we are on the road, you know, with the, with the alternator. And uh, if, as you know, this is a, a loaner from Winnebago. If this was probably my, um, you know, my own trailer, I would probably get that. And uh, I'm definitely gonna suggest it to them because, you know, if, if we're gonna be driving in a couple of hours, by the time we get to our destination, that battery would probably be at least a half full or, or even fully charged, I don't know. All right, let's make some breakfast. And first I'm going to cube this sausage here. One, two, three eggs. Frozen sofrito mix. Let's scramble them. Mm, a little more. Some fresh mozzarella and we've got ourselves a great breakfast. Let's eat. On the road again. And our first destination today will be Jackson, the capital of the Magnolia State, which is not exactly on the Natchez Trace, but close enough to justify a quick detour. We're going to make one stop before seeing the Capitol building, and uh, this is it. It is a very unique park that is unfortunately closed and in disrepair. Let's fly the drone so I can show you what it is. What is so unique about this park is this model of the Mississippi River Basin, made out of concrete. It was built between 1943 and 1966 by the Army Corps of Engineers to help solve unpredictable flood problems. It is supposed to be the world's largest river model ever built. The model recreates the Great River roughly from St. Louis to Baton Rouge and it has been closed since the 1990s, but they are working on reopening it, apparently, at some point. For now, we must content ourselves with these drone images. Let me tell you something, after driving on the Natchez Trace, where there's no traffic, it is a little bit of a sensory overload driving on the interstate. And here we are, Jackson, Mississippi, the state capital city. Let's see if we can find parking, even if it is only for a few minutes, so we can see the capital, and then continue. This building here on the right is the old Capitol Museum, arguably Mississippi's most historic building, built in 1839. never been one to fear narrow downtown streets towing the trailer, but uh, hmm. I don't think I'm supposed to park here, but it is one of those cases where if caught, it might be better to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. The current Capitol building dates back to 1903, and the eagle that stands atop is 8 feet tall and 15 feet wide, made of copper and gilded with gold leaf. One of these days, we'll revisit and go inside, but today, the road beckons. Let's go back to the Natchez Trace.
we're gonna stop here at the Ross R. Burnett Reservoir Overlook. You see, none of these have any marked oversized parking, and uh, there's plenty of room, so I don't see why not. I imagine that this is a great place for Jackson locals to come and relax overlooking the reservoir. <sighs> yeah, this was a nice break. Now let's continue. It is always nice to have a large body of water like this one near the city. Now the next point of interest is called Boyd Site. It is another Indian mound. All right, let's see what this is. It's called Boyd Site. And there was a house here sometime around 500 AD. Yeah, surprising sometimes how little we really know about, you know, these uh, people who lived here 500, 700, 1,000 years ago. I mean, they can kind of infer by the archaeologists, right, by, by artifacts they find. And, you know, there's a mound there, so we're assuming there was a house there. But the mounds, two mounds become one. Okay. Hello. I don't think it's working. Let's explore a little bit, but I think the Indian Mound is the only thing to see. It is so beautiful in this area. Our next stop, the Cypress Swamp. This is the Tupelo Bald Cypress Swamp. Let's check it out. Seems to be a short trail, like a boardwalk. All right, it's supposed to take 20 minutes, so let's do it. Everywhere you look, look at the reflections and of all these huge cypress trees. It's a very nice little hike. Beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, cypress swamp here. And uh, I've seen cypress in Florida, but these are much larger, I think. Less than a mile away here, we're going to encounter another pullout, and this one is the River Bend picnic area.
This here would be the Pearl River. Crestliner. Coming up here on the right is the Jeff Busby Campground which is where we're gonna spend the night. And there's an overlook that you can either hike to or drive to, and we're gonna choose the latter. And we've made it to the summit. Well, here we are, we made it to the little mountain overlook and apparently this is the second highest point in the state of Mississippi. Um, I have no idea how high we are, maybe there's a sign on the other side, but we are at Jeff Busby Park and, um, and now we're going down to the campground. Hopefully there's a, there's a couple of sites available for us. Ooh, it's getting, it's getting chilly up here. And here's the sign, but it's only talking about the little mountain trail, which is a trail that goes from here to the campground. Oh man, the sun is bright. In any case, we're gonna drive down to the campground now and, uh, and hopefully spend the night here. I think this is where we're gonna call it. Actually, this is it. Actually, one more. Now this is it. Well, yeah, this is what we're gonna call it. Very nice campground here, very quiet. We're in the middle of, well, similar to the one that we stayed at uh, last night, in the middle of the forest here. By the way, completely free, part of the National Park Service. And um, of course, completely primitive. We have no hookups at all whatsoever. I think we can survive one more night, uh, maybe even two more nights, but we're not gonna push it. There's, uh, one other person uh, camping down there. It's like uh, car camping and that's about it. And this is our site here. Overlooking this, uh, this forest. Yeah. Grills, fire rain, camping table, garbage. And the bathroom is right there if we were to need to use it, so. I think that's it for today. Tomorrow, we're going up to Tennessee. On the next one, we're going to visit more Indian mounds, the birthplace of the king, and a Confederate gravesite. Then, since a section of the parkway is closed anyway, we're going to take a detour to visit our friends Mike and Jennifer in Linden, Tennessee. From there, we'll retake the trace at the Meriwether Lewis Monument. We'll drive on a section of the old trace. And eventually, we'll celebrate Valentine's Day in the Music City. But more about that in the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding in my RV 
wherever I want to be. And guys, I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. <laughs>